Hey there, Ryan the Ride Mechanic. You guys have probably seen these little silver modules lining the track on lots of impulse roller coasters uh, that you've probably ridden on all over the place. And we're gonna talk about what those are today. Now get ready, here we go. So those little silver boxes that you see all over the track, especially where there's motors, uh, those little boxes are used to get the real-time speed and position back from the train to the drive system. The drive system is what fires those linear inductive motors to get the train to move forward, backward, speed up, slow down, all that sort of stuff. So those little silver boxes are called net sensors. They link via fiber optics all over the track, uh, just in the drive areas and they talk or they get their feedback from this rake that's underneath the train. The rake looks just like, well, a rake. Uh, it's got a bunch of combs, black because they're non-reflective, and they're evenly spaced both in spacing front to back or side to side with each other and the width. So if it's 20 millimeters, if the rake comb is 20 millimeters, then the distance is 20 millimeters and so on. And what that does is that net sensor has a bunch of sensors that, can, that uh, go optically from one side to the other and creates a little beam. And it's got a bunch of them inside creating lots of beams. And then that sensor sits there on the track. And as that rake sensor passes by the net sensor, it creates pulses in a frequency that frequency is given to the drive in real time, and the drive does a couple things with that information. One, it counts. The train, the length of the train, is determined in how many pulses that rake is. So that drive counts. When the train passes from one side to the other of, that, of those sensors, it says, hey, I should have had, we'll throw a number out there, I should have had 270 pulses when that train went all the way through there. The manufacturer allows those pulses to be a little bit higher or a little bit lower, but only by extreme small percentage. Honestly, if it's off by more than like three or four pulses, the ride shuts down because then it doesn't know what's going on. Now, the other thing it's doing is it's taking how fast those pulses are going and that turns it into a different type of rake signal inside the controller and that rake signal determines how the inductive motors are going to fire, when they're going to fire, and what motors are going to fire. That big bank of motors that you see all those big white stators lining the track, that's a bunch of motors sitting there. And sometimes each one of those white things is one stator. You put a stator next to itself and that one pair on average is called a motor. Sometimes it could be six of those stators or even 12 of those stators put together that are also called a motor. But as the train passes through those, if you've got a segment that's 300 feet long, it's not firing electricity to the very end of that segment. If the train is here, it typically just fires the motors right here in front of the train. And it's typically the wave, like say this is your motors firing and here's the train, it typically stays right about here, just in, just a little ahead of the train and stays right with it down that whole motor assembly. So in the back room, there's firesters that are firing, that are turning on, that say, okay, here comes my wave from the controller. And now as it comes along, I'm gonna turn on motors number three, then four, then five, then six, then seven, and then when it turns on number eight, it says kill three. And then when it turns on nine, it says kill four. When it turns on 10, it says kill five. When it turns on 11, it says kill six. You see how they just keep going like that in line with where the train is. So those net modules are extremely critical to feedback. And if there's anything wrong with those rakes, if they get a nick, um, if they get anything reflective on them, if they get oil or fluids on them, uh, if the net sensors on the track get dirty, they start creating uh, feedback errors to the system. 
and then the drive starts doing all sorts of funky stuff and it starts fighting itself and you get errors and everything else so it's a very complex system to keep running but it's necessary to keep the ride smoothly accelerating and deaccelerating and safely operating no matter what hope you enjoyed the subject i'm ryan the ride mechanic stay safe out there like and subscribe if you if you have any uh, questions or any future topics you want to see or talk about, let me know in the comments down below. Have a good one. Bye.